Hello and welcome to DevAbout. My name is Darren and in this session we'll be looking at WebDriver's implicit weight. To see the implicit weight in action, we'll be testing this example web page. It takes an integer as input and then determines whether that number is even or odd. I've already created a new class library project called odd or even dot test and I've used NuGet to add the nUnit package and I've also added the Selenium WebDriver package. I haven't added the Selenium WebDriver support classes as we won't be needing that for this session. I've already added some of the plumbing code. We have a instance member variable called underscore driver and that's of type iWebDriver. Then in the setup method, which is called once before each test by nUnit, we instantiate that driver object with a new Firefox driver and then we use that to navigate to the page we would like to test. There is also a teardown method which nUnit calls once after each test and that's where we close the browser. Below the teardown method there is the first test called should display the parity, parity being odd or even. The text box has an ID of number so we can use that to get a reference to that text field and then we can use number.sendkeys1 to enter 1 into the text box. We then use the buttons identifier of calculate to get a reference to that element and call calculate.click which causes the form to process the input and to display the results. As you can see the result text is shown within this h4 element which has an ID of result. Next we will use this ID to capture that text and perform an assert on it. To do this we introduce a new variable called result and that's equal to driver.findElement and we use the byID locator passing through result as a string. This gives us an, a handle on the result element and now we can perform our assert where the expected result is 1 is odd and we can fetch the actual result by saying result.text. Let's run the test. And we can see that 1 was entered and the button was clicked, but the test has failed. And if we expand this view at the bottom, we can see that there has been a no such element exception thrown. There's a message which explains that WebDriver was unable to locate an element with the ID of result. Let's have a look at the page to see if we can figure out what's happening. If we go back to the browser, we can inspect this area here which has the result text and we can see that there is indeed an element with the ID of result. And let's note that it's actually nested within an output element which has an ID of result placeholder. And let's notice what happens when we refresh the page. I push F5 to refresh the page and now I'm trying to find that HTML again. We've got the output element, which is an ID of result placeholder, however it's empty. At this stage there is no element with an ID of result. I'm manually entering a 1 here and I push calculate and once the page is finished processing we can see now a child has been added to the result placeholder element and I can open that up and now we can see that there is a element there with the ID of result. Now let's put this side by side with the code and we should be able to see exactly why the test is failing. When the test runs, it opens the browser, it enters one into the text box as expected, and then it clicks calculate. And as you may have noticed, there is a bit of a delay between when we push calculate and when we get the result. During this delay, we see a small spinner which indicates that the page is processing the input. And the problem we have is that the code moves on to the next line where it tries to find an element with an ID of result. And at this stage, the page is still processing and there is no element with an ID of result. And that is why the test fails with a no such element exception. One of the most simplistic ways to solve this is simply by delaying the time between when we click the button and when we try to find the element with an ID of result and we can do that quite simply by using a sleep. So let's try that approach first. 
Implementing this is fairly straightforward. We use thread.sleep from the system.threading namespace. We will pass through a parameter of 10,000 milliseconds, which is the same as 10 seconds. When the code hits this line, it will stop for 10 seconds and then move on to the next. This should give the page enough time to complete processing. By the time we query the page for the element with an ID of result, hopefully it has appeared on the page. Let's run the test and see if this works. The page is loaded. We've entered one, clicked calculate. We can see the page has finished processing and now we just need to wait for the test to complete. And finally, we see a passing test. It's great that we have a passing test, but let's have a look at how long it took. It's taken just under 19 seconds. And given that the page took less than five seconds to process the results, this is quite a delay. This is the major problem with using thread.sleep to solve these sort of asynchronous problems, is that quite often the tests take far longer than they need to. And this is precisely the reason we turn to using something like the implicit weight to solve these sorts of asynchronous problems. To implement the implicit weight, we type driver.manage.timeouts.implicitWeight passing through a time span which indicates the timeout period. In our case, this is 10 seconds. This is essentially a global setting and what it means is that from this point on, when the driver is trying to find an element that does not exist, it will wait for a short period of time and then try again. And it will continue in this loop until it either finds the element and then continues, or until the timeout period is reached, in which case an exception will be thrown and the test will fail. Now that we are using the implicit weight, there should be no need to use this thread.sleep line, so we can remove that and then run the test to see if they still pass. Let's run the test. And it's green, so the implicit weight has done its job. And if we look at the duration, it has taken just over 10 seconds, which is roughly half the time that it took when using thread.sleep. And as the test suite grows, these optimizations become essential. Using the implicit weight is far better than using thread.sleep. However, the implicit weight still has limitations. We will explore some of these limitations in the next episode, and we'll see how to use the explicit weight to get around these limitations. I hope you enjoyed this session, and please feel free to leave any questions in the comments below. Thanks, and see you next time.